Welcome, everybody, to Diamonds Network. Tonight is Thursday, September 3rd, 2015, and you are listening to the Candy Shop Candy Show and Elizabeth Diamond on the Diamonds Network. So welcome, everybody. Tonight is what I call our tuning up call, our beauty refreshing call. And we'll, well, we won't just say beauty, we'll call handsome, handsome call too, right? Include everybody. So welcome everybody. And Candy's going to bring in um, some beauty with the Anastasia books. And hopefully we'll have Dale here. He's going to update us on what's going on around the world in a, in a good way coming out of the Matrix news. And Elizabeth Diamond, me, I will be sharing a book I've been reading, Sunshine Before the Dawn, Learning who we really are, and some of some of our, uh, what do you say, roots or heritage. So, Hello, the, everyone. It, I'm a little bit late. In the realm of galactoizing. So now we'll get started. So Candy is going to bring in uh, her, her part, and then we'll introduce Dale, and he'll come on in. So welcome, Candy Shop Candy Jar. How are you? Candy, star six, please. Oh, Did I, good. There you are. And I hear Dale's here, so we'll bring you on, Dale. Just wait for your cue. Yeah, Thank okay. You. Yeah, star six. All right. Well, this is wonderful uh, for the Candy Shop Show to be here as part of the Diamond Network. This is se- September. We've all been waiting for September 2015. And I wanted to bring you a few things from the Candy Jar Treats. Let's see. Um, the uh, uh, I've been doing my mantras. Hope you guys have been doing it. Remember, we like to do it nine times a day. Anastasia talks about the number nine and the importance of of uh, doing things in nines. Uh, you know, little things like planting. Uh, nine okra plants in your row, and maybe planting nine rows of okra. Uh, you know, taking a moment to go step outside and take nine deep breaths. Just embrace the the um, the power of of the nine. Uh, gosh, Doc, uh, Benjamin Fulford's report was pretty amazing. He did a, a, a visualization of what he'd like to see uh, happen in the next few months, and Elizabeth kindly put it up on her blog, and so uh, folks should be checking that out. And then he's been up in Canada finding out uh, what's what's what and what we can look forward to uh, as, as this uh, cabal system crumbles this fall. And, of course, the stock market... It dropped yesterday, and it and it and it barely got going today. It's up and down, all over the place, making people nervous and uh, good, making the elite nervous. So that's a that's a praise, and and so uh, it's going to be uh, exciting to look forward to what Benjamin has to say next Monday when he returns from Canada. I've had a chance, boy. This is a this is a treat. Be sure if you haven't listened to the YouTube video of Cynthia's program from last Thursday that you do so. It was just, you know, out of sight. And, and all the information from Drum, uh, Drumbalo and and uh, the Syrians and how they have been helping us over the decades. And it was really interesting to mesh those dates that she shared with um, with what Anastasia has been saying. I'll be talking about uh, Cynthia's report uh, in in my next segment, but uh, be sure and go to Elizabeth's blog and listen to to that that um, um, YouTube video. Oh, so wow. yeah, let, uh, let me just I, reiterate it. That's Cynthia's show. It's on the blog, or you push on the right to the YouTube channel, you'll see it. Cynthia's number three show. Yeah. Right and 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 of course uh, I I I uh, I hope uh, I want to remind people you know it's uh, diamondsforever31.blogspot.com and that's just an important I go to Elizabeth's 
website every day because either she or, or Chris is putting up something fantastic. I've been working on my forgiveness, I, and I had a lot of, of, of good uh, folks uh, on my uh, candy shop show last last night, Wednesday night, and uh, every Wednesday night, and that's that's great. People are always in, invited. Making more friends uh, from Canada on my uh, Facebook. People can uh, friend me there. Uh, Candy Carol, it's C A R R O L L. Well, um, it's just uh, well, there's been a lot of stressful things coming in for a, a, a lot of us already the first five days of September. Uh, but um, uh, as we overcome each one, that's a praise. And as people, you know, who who, who love each other, friends and family. And we overcome the stresses, then then we're closer together and we're more loving, uh, despite the stresses. And and although I've had a lot of stresses happen, um, the good things have come out. And and I ask Christopher to uh, heal my small town of thirteen hundred people a, a week ago on uh, the candy shop show. And I, I don't know that he's got the whole segment up there. He's just got. Or he might have got the whole thing up. But do be sure and listen. If you haven't listened to the Candy Shop Show with Chris and How to Heal Small Towns, be sure and do that. And I just uh, I just feel everybody in town is smiling better and, and things are happier. And, and this week I've made connections with people I, I have in town that I hadn't happened to run into since six years ago and, and reforged old friendships. And I, I just feel that the healing that Chris gave was just uh, uh, to our Sarcoxy Cemetery, to the town of Sarcoxy, has just been fantastic. So um, if you haven't gotten uh, a private healing from Christopher, I surely recommend it. I, I've done it, and it's been great. Well, that's the candy jar segment. Um, Elizabeth, have you got any feedback or questions or additions that you'd like to share? I just want to let everybody know, oh, my God, I said it on Monday's call. If you have not watched, there's nine hour, nine one-hour shows, and it's, it was debuted this summer. If you have not watched Mr. Robot yet, oh, my God, it's totally, totally full disclosure. It's all if you studied Nasera and the financial reset and corpor- corporation propaganda. And if you studied the White Knights, the good guys infiltrated. And it's a beautiful show. There's a lot of deep, deep stuff. It's made like a beautiful book. A lot of subliminal for the good side, not the bad programming, but for our good programming. And it, ta- it doesn't talk about it, but it surely says it especially at the end, that we are all one. <laughs> yeah, Mr. Robot, it's on cable, on the cable channel USA, but, but I heard I, they said on the last show that you can find it online. So try to Google Mr. Robot. I'm telling you, you get hooked if you've studied all that, and you would just, you'll be ecstatic. That series okay. of shows came out on June 24th, 2015, this summer. And the, okay. the grand finale, grand finale was just, this Wednesday, and I, they're going to bring a new series of that back next summer. So I'm looking forward to it. So okay. I'll look it up. Yeah, and that's well, all I have for great. that. Yeah, <laughs> and everybody who hasn't read Chris's first book should certainly be uh, doing so. I'm enjoying it on my Kindle uh, from the fall to the lifting. Uh, and I still recommend that that people actually get get Anastasia uh, as as well. It's just a it's just a blessing uh, to get into it. And 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 the American website, if you don't want to get it from like Amazon dot com, if you want to get it directly from the publishers, it's ringingtheaters dot com. And everybody should register there their email. And and I did that over a year ago, and I've only received one email from them. So they don't, uh, you know, they don't abuse abuse it when you when you register. And I would register at their website even if you haven't got time to get the books. Uh, in book one, it's called Anastasia, 
book two is called The Ringing Cedars Series, and book three is The Space of Love. I just adore uh, the titles and the pictures of the beautiful flowers that are are, are each of the Anastasia books. And uh, last week I was reading uh, from... um, Chapter 7, Anastasia's Ray, and I was reading a lot of page 46 and 47, and and, uh, and, and Vladimir McGree was trying to uh, understand her abilities. Now, he was a Russian businessman in 1995, and he didn't understand uh, a lot of the spiritual concepts and things that are just commonplace to us folks on, on the Diamond Network at that time. Uh, but he wanted to ask the kind of questions. He wanted to also, I think, play dumb a little bit and ask the questions. If, if this would fall in someone's hands who didn't know anything about anything, you know, what would be their basic questions? And 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 uh, a lot of people are interested in in proof. They don't. And and, and so he was asking for proof. And of course, these gifts that that Anastasia had. Uh, many of us feel that we are going to be getting these gifts as we go into the tenth level of the fourth dimension, um, and, and, and you know we're all beginning to become a little bit more uh, psychic and telepathic and able to do some automatic writing and and these things. I um, I think, but she has really was very advanced at these things. And yeah. and so so that not only could she take an astral trip, but she could actually dematerialize her body and take it, uh, you know, to Moscow and visit <laughs> Vladimir in his apartment, or or even take it and go to uh, another planet. Uh, Candy. Yes. Uh, what book is that? Did you say? Uh, well, I'm in. I'm talking tonight uh, specifically from. The book one, Anastasia. Oh, book one. But I'm quoting some things that are in the more advanced books too. Oh, okay. Uh, but you know this 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 uh, ray of Anastasia is uh, and and you're, it's fine for you to ask me to clarify, Susan. I appreciate your remarks, and uh, uh, it, it's it's like your own television. It, it's and you have to increase your energy in order to uh, have a stronger ray. And she gives a lot of clues about mm-hmm. how to increase your energy, you know, like like drinking nine drops of dew in the morning or um, or eating a, uh, a a diet that has very little or, or no meat, meat in it because it's such and, – and dead GMO foods and all of that stuff. Just eating, breathing, having fresh water, uh, sleeping with an open window – all these kind of things that increases your energy. I listened to this wonderful uh, interview with Julian Wells, and he shared about how his mentor told him how to uh, increase his energy level with all of these things. Oh yes, and 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 he wa- his mentor told Julian Wells. I was going to put this in the candy jar segment part to have a drink every morning of of four lemons two oranges, and a grapefruit. Mm-hmm. And uh, that was just a you know, really powerful cleanse for him to do uh, for a while. And, 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 and people have to be kind of aware of how they, I kind of visualize it, think of it as a metaphor, uh, uh, like a, a bucket, you know. So I've, I'm... Uh, I used up a lot of energy yesterday, and I'd better do some things today to refill my bucket full of energy. And, and, and you know, oops, my bucket is getting a little uh, low on, on, the, uh, on the energy level. I better uh, stop and do some meditating and pull it back up. So I'm, I'm, I'm and, and, you know, I, I need, uh, people need to know how to say no if people are asking Folks to drain to do something that would drain drain your energy to drain it too low. It's hard if if you get your bucket empty uh, of no energy. It's awfully hard to uh, get it 
jump start it again. And yeah. and so you've got to protect your energy. Uh, you, you know, just just going, being invited to a party, and a lot of people are smoking. Uh, that kind of thing can just uh, really pull one's energies down. So we have to we have to be aware to how to increase our energy, how to use it wisely, and and how to protect it. Well, she was talking to Vladimir, and he said, uh, "So you." Anastasia, you you went to see my wife, and and it was chilly, and you warmed her up with your ray, so that she took her cardigan off. Well, uh, you know what else can your ray do? Well, Vladimir, it can gather certain kinds of information or transmit it. That sounds like telepathy coming and going. It can cheer up a person's mood and partially take away some one's illness. She could actually heal people's illness pretty much all together, but she wouldn't heal Vladimir completely, just heal his ulcer, because she said sometimes illnesses are lessons. They're the catalyst to learn what you need to learn um, about energy protection and, and growth and, and other things. There are a lot of other things your ray can do, Vladimir, depending on the energy available and the degree of feeling will, and desire. Boy, Cynthia was talking about uh, our will and desire last Thursday and how we we don't need to desire something that someone else told us. We need to tune in and find out what we truly desire and and, and visualize that and put that out there. And, and, you know, just like like Benjamin uh, in his report Monday, he he says, "I'm, I'm visualizing... 500 special forces to go around one morning to the 12 Federal Reserve banks and, and bar the doors and close them down. Oh, no. Yes. Oh, goodness. <laughs> that was cool. <laughs> well, Vladimir said, and can you see the future? Of course. The past, too? The future and the past, they are pretty much the same thing. It is only the external details that are different. The essence always remains unchanged. How can that be, Anastasia? What can remain unchanged? Well, for example, a thousand years ago, people wore different clothes. They had different instruments at their disposal. But that is not what is important by any means. Back a thousand years ago, just like today, people had the same feelings. Feelings are not subject time. Fear, joy, love, just think. Ivan the Terrible and the Egyptian pharaohs, they were all capable of loving a woman with exactly the same feelings as you or any other man today. Interesting. Only, Anastasia, I'm not sure what it means. You say every person can have a ray like this? Of course everyone can. Even today, people still have feelings and intuition. The capacity to dream of the future, to conjecture, to visualize specific situations, to have dreams while they sleep. Only it is all chaotic and uncontrollable in today's world. Well, maybe some kind of training is necessary, Anastasia. Some exercises could be developed. Some exercises might help, but you know, Vladimir, there is one absolute condition that must be met before the ray can be controlled by the will. And what condition is that? It is absolutely necessary to keep one's thoughts pure. Mm-hmm. As, the, as the strength of the ray depends on the strength of radiant feelings. I just love these books. And, the, you know, just like last week, she ex- she was very exuberant when she woke up and and greeted the sunrise, and here she's talking about us having radiant feelings. I, I don't know. I I I've, uh, was fortunate to love my 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 husband for so many years when when he was alive, but I don't know. Sometimes you just get kind of pulled down by the daily life, you know, and you forget. Mm-hmm. 
Good morning, radiant uh, love. Are we going to have a radiant day? And and I'm I'm just uh, so pleased with the example that Anastasia shows about loving family and friends and trees and flowers uh, and, and the excitement of what uh, uh, can come our way. Vladimir said, now there you go. Just when everything was starting to get clear, what on earth have pure thoughts to do with it? Poor radiant beings. They are what power the ray, Vladimir. That's enough, Anastasia. I'm already losing interest. Next, you'll be adding something else. I've already told you what is essential. That you most certainly did, but you've got to many darn conditions. Let's talk about something else, something a little simpler. Well, (laughs) I get a little disgusted with Vladimir because she's just getting to the good parts and then his mind can't, can't handle it. Of course, he, in his business world, they were so far from pure thought and he was feeling, you know, a little guilty uh, because, um, uh, like so many, uh, um, like so, so many b- businessmen uh, and, and and others, uh, he didn't take his marriage vows seriously. He didn't think he he had he committed uh, adultery and all kinds of of different things and drinking and smoking. Uh, I'm a little disappointed he's still doing that, but that doesn't matter. Uh, he cooperated, he did it, what Anastasia said, to share the message, you know, with the world. Uh, I know she was disappointed that that he didn't uh, help his own health and things better, but but he did better than he was before, and so that's good. Well, there she is. Uh, I gave some examples about increasing one's energy, but she says it's the pure thoughts and the radiant feelings that are so critical to and and Chris has said you know when he analyzed his negative behaviors and thoughts and he forgave himself and he forgave the situation and just let it dissolve then he can move forward you know with his own pure thoughts and his his own radiant feelings, and he can be a really good remote viewer and channeler of these wonderful information that he shares on uh, the Diamond Network. Well, uh, gosh, my time goes by uh, quickly. The uh, uh, she, she has this interesting style, which I really think is much like Chris's style in that he slips in, you know, in one chapter he might be talking about Samson, another chapter Christopher Reeves, another chapel, chapter be Archangel Michael, or uh, next chapter might be about something that he and his parents are doing. Uh, and and so uh, it, it, his style, Chris, Chris, Christopher Jacob's style, reminds me of Vladimir McGree's style. And uh, and and Chris wrote to me yesterday. He said, "Style? I didn't know I had a style." <laughs> but uh, like in this book one, uh, there's uh, we're going to talk about who likes a new star. Other chapter headings are uh, my my beloved uh, country gardens. Uh, advice on using seeds to to heal oneself, how to raise bees and get pure honey, uh, morning and evening uh, ceremonies, sleeping under one star, uh, being a mentor for your child. And and, uh, so it it flips back and forth for practical living and developing these biological uh, technologies like her, like her Ray. So I hope you'll join me again in two weeks. And uh, if if you start to uh, read the book, let let me know if you've got some questions. Um, you can um, you can 
let me know um, what your questions are, uh, and um, so I'm um, I'm available at Owaspi2002 at yahoo.com. So you can contact me with any feedback or questions you want me to address at oahspe2002 at yahoo.com. And this is the Candy Shop Show signing off. Elizabeth, you and Dale can take it away. Okay, well, stay around, Candy. And I undid the room. I I just want to just encourage you guys to come in if you are reading the Anastasia or if you have, you can come and add to what Candy has said on the Thursday shows, or you can um, bring any thoughts you have up from reading that within that. So now is your time. We'll give five or six minutes for anybody to come in to comment on what they heard, even if you haven't read the book, or even or if you have read the book. So star six, anybody? We'll give that chance here, and then we'll bring Dale on. Susan, would you like to comment on Anastasia? Uh, uh- well, I, Candy, the thing of it is, I you know I don't like to comment with something that I haven't had uh, at least a, 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 a view of. You know, I, 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 it's new to me, and uh, I, I, it's something I have yet to, to really focus on and, and, and pay attention to before I can even you know extrapolate a question that would that makes any sense other than it's it, it sounds really good. You know. Okay. Thanks for that. Dale. Is there anybody? Anybody else would like to comment? Come on. Um, come on. I heard somebody. This is Sunny. I came on a little late because I didn't get home, but I've read a, two of the Anastasia books, and I really liked a lot what she had to share, and I felt she was a good representation of the divine feminine energy. So, so, Sunny, give us one. Now, you, you're remembering you, re, you read those books. And give us one heart spark you got out of the book that really stuck with you. Just share with us. You know, it doesn't have to be detailed, but just what you can remember a, a well, minute or I, two. I think it was what it, what's really stuck with me is the uh, rapport she had with the animals in the nature kingdom and how they um, they weren't afraid of her at all. They were her friends, and they helped her. And the squirrels even chewed nuts for her. You know, they helped her. That She was so in harmony with nature. She was a part of nature. And so that that was really something that I loved. Uh, yeah. That's beautiful. Thanks for sharing that. Right, Candy? Anybody else out there like to come in? I, I have tried like to... Go ahead. Yeah, uh... The, the the only thing I wanted to wish, and, and you know, keep in mind that I was I was mentored by my uncle who uh, discovered the Owaspi in 1947. But his his training was as an economist, and his his work in the Owaspi was how to tra- figure out how to transform the world the, from a money system to a non non money system, and that's what his life work was. And I you know I spent well over 40 years with him, and you know the 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 yeah, and Nobody is more happy about the the turn of events in the in the in the wide world, uh, and its weaknesses showing up and and uh, it, it's uh, dismantling. And you know, I, my position is the republic is like like my you know like a father that gives that gives birth to the to the new world, and uh, you know it it's uh, it's uh, there's a bit of melancholy attached to it. Uh, but you know, it's like uh, the way I say the, the in the waspy. It says, uh, "Don't don't lament. Uh, you know, don't mourn over over somebody's passing, and you know, uh, you know, but be joyful because uh, you know they're they're having they're entering a, a a a better time, a better place, and and that's like the birth of this new world that that's being created as we speak is the joyful part and. And it's it's like, but it's very very controlled. This decline, there because there has to be enough substance in the world to be able to build a new one. If it just crumbles down to nothingness, then within it's going to be a much greater struggle for us to 
Uh, it, it, uh, what I can say is the money system is a tool to be used to build the new world, you know, and, and, and so it, it's a, much as important. Not, not that I wanted to have any any largesse or, or great success, but I wanted to remain intact enough, you know, we have enough hammer and nails and wood and lumber and whatever we need from it to make sure that the foundation of the new world is established before it just disintegrates. And, you know, there's a, there's definitely a sense of urgency. And, and, uh, and uh, you know, I'm, well, I'm a 17-year-old kid that's around my uncle that's had the wasp fever, uh, you know, since 1947. And uh, when, I was, when I was 17, I figured by the time uh, the, the 2000 came around, we'd have 10,000 cities, you know, fraternities. And, uh, you know, and, and so... Uh, I, I had a really, a real sense of urgency uh, to create a, a better place. And what, what the evil in the thing is, is being resistant to change. Because when the ideas came out, the Owaspi was published, and it was clearly uh, uh, anybody who could read and write could, and read the handwriting on the wall said that the days of this way of life are numbered and that we should start working together. Well, the minute you start holding on to the old, that's where that's where the suffering begins. It's just like using uh, combustible engines when you 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 have electricity and electric cars available to you, but you choose to make money and pollute the atmosphere instead of going on, going with the new idea. So uh, you know, it's a, that was that was a, all it take, Kenny. I'm I'm happy that uh, they're, they're incurring hardship in trying to make this old jalopy run. But I also want to temper that with, oh, please, you know, don't, don't do it too fast because we, we've got to get enough uh, cities uh, around the world or fraternities around the world so that everybody's going to be able to eat and we can make this transition with as little pain as possible. Hello? Dan, do you want to respond to that? Uh, hello? Yeah. Can you hear me? Can you me? hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. I, I asked it? Candy if she wants to respond to that. Candy, are you there? She might have got uh, pushed off. She'll be back. Oh, okay, I'm, better. I'm here. Oh, there she is. I'm there here. she is. Yeah. Okay. You you want to respond to what well, Dale I, said I real know. quick? I don't know if Dale was responding to the Candy Jar segment or he was starting his own segment. But, you know, no. I'm inviting this joy. Because joy is the the key thing. Anastasia said throughout her books, you know, Vladimir, if you and your readers can't understand what I'm asking or suggesting, just be joyful in your daily lives and your energy will increase and I can access the energy and I can help make the world a better place. Yeah. Beautiful. Yeah, beautiful. (laughs) Okay, so now... Now let's go on to uh, Dale's spot. Dale, welcome, Dale. We're going to bring in the good news of what's going on in the world, what we're building new and creating, and it's about change. It's about a paradigm shift, a new way of thinking, a new way of doing things. So, Dale, I'm gonna, we're going to 20 minutes, and I'll give you like five minutes when you got five minutes. So let's try okay. it with 20 minutes today. Okay, okay. here's Dale. Welcome, okay. Dale, to the Diamonds Network. And, and Elizabeth, uh, you know, I, I'm I'm in. Uh, uh, there, I have a baby, and I'd say I, I need to uh, give it a name. And I I was going to put this before the group, and uh, I uh, I just uh, came up with voices from a, uh, an alternative world. Uh, you know, and, and that anything. My assumption is anything that comes on this broadcast is property of Diamond Network. So whatever. I like you know, that. I like it, Dale. Voices from. An alternative world. Introducing Dale from the Diamond Network. Take it away, Dale. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, you know, originally I had uh, planned on having a guest uh, and the, the Millennium uh, Seven community in uh, the Philippines. I sent them an email, and I have yet to hear from the, uh, them as a response. And then, uh, Sonny, are you there? Well, Sonny, uh, Sonny called me on the telephone and mentioned that. Uh, that he, she had an individual that was part of a, an intentional community, and uh, she said that he, he she was going to be uh, trying to get him to come on the program, but uh, as of yet, she hasn't had uh, the, the person. So now that we have a title, uh, Voices from an Alternative World, I, 
I kind of love it. It will express what the focus is. And uh, the focus then is, you know, there are several organizations. Uh, one is a Fellowship for Intentional Communities, and they have a directory of literally hundreds of, uh, uh, and I think the count in the United States is there are actually 3,000 alternative communities that are registered with that uh, uh, group or, or uh, are associated with it. And the point is that these are people that, you know, with with the creator and family and friends, there are many different shades of color here because some are uh, right-wing, uh, conservative, uh, the Christian, uh, Buddhist, uh, you, you know, you, you, it's a really mixed bag of gestalts that uh, – various gestalts uh, that that uh, are, these communities consist of. But there's one, one, uh, you know, there's one thread that runs through all of them, and that is the desire to live together in peace in a small community with family and friends, and, uh, and, and uh, the, the, great, the greatest percentage of them uh, w w are using eco-village principles of permaculture and renew renewable energy, and uh, and uh, a good percentage are uh, uh, founded on a, a, a plant-based diet or vegetarian. So uh, what what the plan is to come is to have these members of these various communities uh, come on the program and discuss their particular community, uh, their their spiritualism, their governance, their culture, their you know the art, the science, uh, the music, the agriculture, and the energy. You know, they're the alternative energy sources of saving and architecture. You know, what are they discovering in the process of building, uh, building the community? You know, and and things they have learned. And uh, and the idea is to provide provide a pathway for those people who are disenchanted with the uh, the present way of life, in hopes of getting them to get together with with their family and friends and go out and and develop communities themselves. So. It's, 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 this, the whole idea is to exchange information and ideas and educate one another on how to build uh, a better world uh, uh, based on our alternative principles. And uh, inherent, inherent in those are uh, love and truth and uh, justice, uh, wisdom, uh, peace, and freedom. You know, and I think within all within all of that, we have, we have all these needs. Uh, that are spiritual and physical and, and mental and and psychological and and they all it, it, we have to be running on all eight cylinders. So naturally, you know, we have to take into consideration. Well, if we're, you can't, you know, we can't build a new world doing the same old thing we used to do. So, well, that means well, probably money has to go out the window and probably uh, ownership of land and probably laws and probably police and probably armies and probably borders and uh you know all all the all the tragedy it's it's like uh kind of like galileo when he came along and said well the, we're not the center of the universe and the world isn't flat well what happened is he got put under house arrest for the re remainders of his life for uh you know, you know uh, advocating heresy and um so it's really uh the extreme position you know, 180 degrees from what we're doing is probably pretty close to what we should be doing. And uh, uh, keeping that in mind, uh, we, you know, we, we, we're not going to have leadership. We're going to have consensus. And so now the the idea, the, that, that infinite thing that comes from within us becomes uh, the supreme, you know, what what is the best thing to do? What is the best idea? We're going to get away from... Uh, following individuals, you know, because everybody and everybody in the community has an inspiration that's that's from the Creator and is valid, and and we want to hear that, even if it's from a child. We we want to engage everyone in the process of life, and 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 we want to become integrated uh, and dependent, uh, interdependent on our our environment. That, that, that there's it's seamless. We, we we and we are one, and that's our mantra. So. Uh, having said that, if uh, if, if somebody's uh, been uh, sparked with some ideas and, and they want to have some input on this, uh, please, uh, by all means. 
Well, that has inspired me, Dale. What I think we'll do here at the Diamonds Network, if you're willing, is on the on me and Candy's show on Thursdays, I'd like to, you to come in on this spot for like 10 minutes and prelude okay. us with a little inspiration like you did now, and okay. then introduce your guest that you'll have on. And on okay. another night, we'll plan for an hour show for you where you can come on and have a little speech like you just did now of different things and then introduce your guest of that certain community, and we'll learn about what that community does. And just know, you guys, everybody doing this alternative, going into the golden age, co-creating, they've done a lot of study, a lot of research, even probably a lifetime, 20, 30 years to develop it and learn all the nuances about it, and then they put it into action. So when we bring this, and Dale brings this information forward, we'll have like a springboard. We won't have to spend those years of, research and stuff and just spring off of their board and even bring even more creative innovative ideas into what you get from them how's that sound Dale? well you know it's it's patently clear to me that the only way that we're going to uh have a better world is if we build it with our creator and and you know that's all nuts and bolts it's 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 doing the work you know and 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 getting into the minutia and the details of relationships of who we are, what we are, and where we're going, and why. Because if we don't have the spiritual side of this thing there nailed down, and we don't have our gestalt intact uh, and 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 solid, uh, then there were our, our our possibility of success is just uh, you know uh, remote. Ab- Absolutely, and maybe Sunny could be your first guest because she knows about the Native American community. Oh. We'll do, we'll work with that. And uh, Dale, for, yeah, I'll let you. Is this? And then for maybe for the next ten minutes, Dale, that you could just encourage us with the different kinds of, um, uh, I'll just say nationalities of groups. Like there's a, a whole community. What you just said, they make communities. What other kind of groups are there changing the world mm-hmm. out there in different aspects? Well, you know, this this is a thing that I'm I'm really uh, uh, really uh, came to me, and I I don't want to exclude anybody, even even people that may be uh, in contradiction to our beliefs, because within those communities there is something that there that to be discovered and something positive that we that the whole world can use. I don't want to I don't want to get anybody isolated with a, you know, they're 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 right one extreme white supremacists and I, I don't want to well, focus on the negative aspects of their community. No, I but, understand. I just yeah. wanted to bring in different groups. Like there's groups and to encourage everybody that people are developing the new world now. Like there's groups out there that are developing different kinds of agriculture that don't hurt the land or the animals. There's other groups that are just kind of just give us an overview on some of the groups that, you know, that are doing different things for the world. You know, I met with uh, uh, Jeffrey Lawton. He's from Australia. He's he's like the, the god of permaculture. And, you know, the thing that really impressed me, you know, I had a really great discussion with him over here in the, at a, a, a convention they had. Uh, the the California Eco Invention uh, down in uh, Fallbrook at one of the casinos, and he I sat down with him. I met his wife and everything, and uh, so I sat down and we were talking. And uh, you know, I, I was explaining to him the the importance of uh, of get, getting you know I, I, the first the first order of the day is the biggest problems are going to become because of shortage of food. And uh, and he, being an agriculturalist, uh, you know, he he said, yeah, if we, we if things are going to go a lot smoother if we can get everybody fed. And then I said, you know, uh, he told me this story of of uh, in, in these uninhabited regions. The, re- the reason why they're uninhabited is because they're inhospitable, and and they use the word and uninhabitable. Now. Uh, Jeffrey challenged a group of agronomists in the Middle East, uh, and he saw uh, there was this, uh, like a, a salt lake or a salt dome, and, uh, and, and, I, and he said, well, how come nobody's growing anything here? And he said, oh, and they all, and these were scientists. They, they, these weren't, you know, crackpots. Uh, uh, they, they said, well, it's impossible to grow anything there. And, and Jeffrey said, no, it isn't. He said, "You can, you can, uh, by 
by using a certain methods and principles, you can convert this land and make it uh, uh, tillable and, and, and productive. And they all laughed at him, you know. And 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 he 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 went about approving it to him. So what he did is we went through a process of uh, re-energizing the soil, and and it was it was certain uh, organic material, you know. Uh, it was all it was nothing nothing processed. So it wasn't from Monsanto, uh, but but just using the natural uh, uh, organic material, and he created a uh, a mulch that held moisture. And then on top of that, you know, it, it finally got to the point where the organic material got into the consistency of soil. And then he went up and he started planting. And, and, and you know, it's like, I don't know how many, it took some time. It took three or four years or more. He actually had a fruit orchard right on top of the salt. So, uh, the, the 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 point of all that is to say, you know, we, there's way you can take the most, un, you know, it, when this uh, uh, system looks at a piece of land, it's got to have water, it's got to have agriculture, it's got to have minerals, it's got to have this, and it's got to have that, it's got to have oil before they have any interest in it. And so, the thing, and he said, all I all I need is access to the land. So presumably, right now, the the places that are uninhabited that nobody wants, uh, you know, amount to you know, literally millions or billions of acres. So with with that permaculture technology and solar and wind uh, and and the new technology, there's even, uh, like, uh, once before I believe I mentioned uh, to someone, the, the IBM's come out with a solar collector that actually uh, the byproduct of its operation is water. <laughs> so it, it, it gets from the atmosphere. So... You know, it's soon coming to pass that there isn't any place that somebody can go out in, in the worst uh, conditions and the, and the poorest soil and create a community that's, that's self-sufficient. And uh, and that's the, the, the beauty of that is it's going to be easy for somebody for land that doesn't have any value to to this uh, uh, free market economy that 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 it's viable for habitation and. All we want to do is be self-sufficient and live in a community in peace. We don't, you know, nobody's, uh, I, I, nobody of this ilk wants to uh, uh, conquer the world, you know. Um, and so that's that's one of the really bright spots in agriculture, and really one of the bright spots in energy that the the solar technology is advancing to the point where there's all kinds of dynamics that are going to help us in being able to establish the communities. And you know it comes down it comes down to really the most important part of this whole thing is back to the spiritual side, because you know when you when you say okay well I want to I want to shed all these uh, these these garments or, or chains I, I, I you know I don't want to have to get tied up in a, in a, a court with a law and I don't want to have to suffer the shortages of money and I want to be self sufficient well what do we replace it with? And that's a, a, a firm understanding and commitment uh, of, of uh, who we are and what we are and where we're going and why. And that brings the creator right into the, you know, right into the living room. I mean, it's uh, it has to be this, our spirituality has to be a living, breathing part of our entity and, and central to everything else. Beautiful, 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 Dale. So, you know, and I can think of another realm, too, uh, uh, hemp. Hemp is very popular, and people are bringing that out in the alternative world. There's many, 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 many uses, not just in the health department for hemp. or yeah. other one. They renamed it marijuana. So we'll bring All that right. in, and I think uh, next time, Dale, Sonny's ready to go as a guest. So okay. me and you, me, you and Candy will get together and figure out a day for you to a show, a day to have that hour show, and then um, you can uh, we'll get it started. And Sunny, okay. I hear you. I'm here. I'm here. I'm Sunny. I'm here. <laughs> Sunny, I'm would you like to be the first guest on Voices of an yeah. Alternative World? How that, that would be? That would be in two weeks. Well, voices from an alternative yeah. world. Voices from an alternative world. No, it 
It may be next week if we decide on the day, and, oh. and, we'll, and it depends on when Dale wants to start. So, okay. well, well, listen, let's uh, let's do this. Uh, this there there is a real sense of urgency because we have to start uh, teaching okay. teach these people how to build communities. Today is Friday, and me and you just give me a call, and we'll figure out a date tomorrow. How's that? I mean, today's okay. Thursday, yeah. and we'll we'll That's figure out the date tomorrow. Elizabeth, could you email uh, me the, all the information I need on, on your particulars, uh, the addresses, phone numbers, and, and so on? Uh, uh, my, my all you email. need to do is call me. Okay. Uh, Can well, you call uh, me free from Alaska? I, I, uh, I don't uh, have a pen right okay, here. Okay, you're, you're on Facebook, right? Uh, yeah. I'm on Facebook, Elizabeth Mulligan, with the diamond. Just go in and friend me if we're not friends, and then go to go 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 to me and private message me, and I can get you on my phone. So okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Yeah. Well, okay. Uh, all right. So uh, all right. So we'll talk. Can we, can we yes, do a three way or I'm yeah we can we yeah can we'll do that we'll do a we'll do a three way okay a three way yeah. <laughs> all right three way <laughs> thank you guys. Yeah. Thank There's you, some thank you. things I wanted to add to you know what was being said. Well, I, I guess you're okay. Well, here's now. what we're gonna here's what we're gonna do, Sunny. Stay yeah. tuned. Voices sure. from a from an what is it again? Voices from voices from an alternative world. Okay, thank you. Okay. So what we're gonna do is Dale's done, and I'm gonna do my uh, reading, and then after that, we're gonna take any questions or comments of what Dale's brought in or what I've read. Okay, how's that sound? Yeah, that Beautiful. sounds good. That sounds good. Okay. Great. Everybody star six now. I'll leave the room open. Okay. So, we're, yeah. Oh, this is beautiful. So we're going to continue with Sunshine Before the Dawn by Judy Satori. You can get the book on Amazon. And it's the true story of why we're here on Earth. Last week we read the prologue of how Judy got to told us the story of how she telepathically wrote this book from other beings. And they have to do with our development of our DNA. You know, we've heard Secret Space Program. They have uh, lots of of, uh, the great experiment going on with lots of other ET groups regarding our DNA. But these are the beings that put their goodness in us regarding our DNA. And so there's the good side of our DNA change story, too, and that's what I'm reading. So I'll just read one chapter. I'm hoping it'll only take about 20 minutes. And um, if you haven't listened to the prologue, that's a really big overview. Just go back to uh, the last show me and Candy had, and that's on the YouTube channel. Click on the right-hand side on the Diamonds blog, Diamonds with an S, forever, 31.blogspot.com. Look for Candy and Elizabeth's show. I also blogged it. So come on, cat. All right. Chapter 1 is The Dreamers. 100,000 years ago, long ago in a time known by the ancients as Zeptipi, the first time, the Council of Light for our Milky Way galaxy gathered on a far-flung star called Antara. The Council's responsibility was in to introduce life to those star systems that could support embodied physical life. The members of the Council of Light aligned with the oneness, the creative force of the heavens, with the energy of God, so that they could create within these energy constructs as God. They were beings of love, highly evolved masters of creation. Although they are embodied in physical form, they emanated and radiated light. To be in their presence was to feel love. The Galactic Council of Light met together on the star and terrace in a vast crystal cavern. The walls shone like shot silk with a light that shimmered vivid electric blue and red. The light reflecting of the crystalline walls looked like millions of red fireflies glowing on a sea of cobalt blue. The cavern resonated... Somebody needs to mute. Star six. The cavern resonated with a peculiar energy that was both soothing and vitalizing at the same time. A large round table stood in the center of the vast room. It was polished a deep... Okay. 
please, somebody mute. Sorry, guys. And this must be an important story because I got cats and dogs bother me. <laughs> Sorry, guys. It was polished deep azure blue that glistened in the light, reflecting off the walls of the cavern. Around the table on red satin chairs were seated many beings, members of the Galactic Federation from throughout the galaxy. The Galactic Council of Light had assembled to discuss a problem concerning Earth, a planet in one of the outer arms of the Milky Way galaxy. I am very concerned, said their leader, Mastiana. Earth man should be given the capacity for both physical and soul evolution, just as it is given to other species within the lower dimensional worlds. I do not feel that earth beings should be denied this gift. It is a gift from God, the creator of all. We do not know how earth beings will respond to this gift of spirit, but we do know that they should not be denied all beings in population one light systems, those newly evolving star systems where there, where there is physical life, must be given the capacity for soul advancement. We cannot deny it to the earth man. But do you not see, Mastiana, argued Proteus, the wise teacher from Alpha Centura, that if we give earth beings this energy of new creation, they might one day use these forces against us. How do we know that they how do we know that they will not in some future time many eons from now rise up and use the gifts of creation we give them to enter into conflict with us and those from an, from other worlds of light No I say that this experiment is too risky we cannot take the chance because with our gifts earthman will most likely one day have the capacity to fly beyond the earth the earth beings will perhaps evolve to develop great ships of light that will fly through the heavens with the potential to cause us harm. I say that they should not be given the mental and spiritual capacity to join with us. Certainly earth is a population, one light system, but earth vibrates within a third dimensional wave band of energy that is partially separated from our influence. Although we can communicate with and observe those on Earth, the beings on Earth are confined by third-dimensional veiling into living out their lives in an illusionary world of their own making. We can neither tell them what to do nor show them the way directly, for to do so would interfere with their free will and defeat the whole experiment in consciousness that we and the Elohim have been wanting to create on Earth. You say you want to create more enlightened race of beings for the earth, and yet what guarantee is there that one day they will not use our gifts against us? How can we be sure that earth beings will make decisions based on love and peace? They might align with fear and misperception. We have visited their world many times in the past, and they have not welcomed us. You have seen for yourselves how... They make war on those who threaten them and that even within their close kin, there is discord and enmity. Proteus sighed, trying to convince the council was exhausting him. No, I say that these beings should not be accepted in the, into the Federation. They should be left alone until such a time as they begin to demonstrate a different state of consciousness. Mastiana, the Lyrian leader of the Galactic Council, raised his hand. A vibration of peace and calm flowed from his upturned palms and spread throughout the assembly. I hear your concerns, Proteus, but we have a responsibility to listen to the cries of the earth beings and respond. There are some among them who do hold light within their being and who genuinely wish only good for their people. You are aware that the Palladians have established a colony on the earth and they are attempting to teach and demonstrate to the earth beings the meaning of love and the tenets of peace. But Atlantis is as yet a tiny colony, protested Proteus. It will be many years, many cycles of time before it will be forced upon the before it will be a force upon the earth, and even then it may fail in its design. So we're in the time, you guys, as Atlantis is yet a tiny colony, okay, on Earth. 
We cannot know, we cannot tell whether the beings of the earth will respond to the teachings of love. They are not like us. They do not as yet have the genetic capacity to reason and to show genuine concern for others. No, it is risky business, and for now, we do not know what earth man will do if we give him our gifts of new creation and bring him into a spiritual union with us. Damias, the high priest of Lyria, rose from his chair and motioned to Mastiana that he wished to speak. I am weary of listening to this argument, Proteus, he said. Who are you to deny to, deny to the beings of the earth our lineage of life? Do you not realize that you yourself, by your own words, are not living by are not living by the truth of the way? How can you suggest that Earth man be kept apart and not have an opportunity to rise above the other life forms on the Earth or one day join with us? The beings on Earth were created by the Creator of all, just as we were. They are confined to a world which, through beautiful which though which though beautiful is a very challenging place to live i second that right at this time they don't have either their the technology or the mental and spiritual capacity to advance it is up to us to help the earth beings evolve so that in some future time the earth might come of age and return to fifth dimensional status like the star sirius as you well know, Earth was once a fifth dimensional planet called Terra. It is only because of our unwillingness to intercede with the free will of man that Earth fell in consciousness and vibration and became a third dimensional planet and a place of illusion and challenge. It is true that many of the Earth beings at this time are barbarians and do not vibrate with love, but there are some who have earned the right to move forward by their own merit and their own actions. We cannot deny these souls the same right to soul advancement as we enjoy. Demaeus paused to look around at the council. The beings on earth are part of the oneness of creation as we are. They too came to those these lower heavenly worlds through the stargate of Lyra. They have been trapped on earth because of misinformation and the malice of the fallen angels but their souls still hold the purity and essence of their original creation. Their original genetic code has been corrupted and must be advanced for the earth to be restored and redeemed. Okay, I'm just going to sure I'm... I propose that each star nation presented, present here today contribute part of its genetic heritage to the creation of a new species of being upon the earth, that's us, that. a more spiritually evolved creation, a species that will have a greater capacity to love and to use its mind in advanced ways. We should take the best of what is within each of our races and merge these capacities and abilities into a new type of earth being. In a future time, the earth will come of age, and we're coming on that. We're right there, you guys. We're in that transition. In a future time, that's now, the earth will come of age and be restored to fifth dimensional status, and earth beings will need to be ready for this shift. After four great ages, when each of our four 26,000 earth year durations has come and gone, mankind will be ready. In this future time, which is now, that's me saying that. We want to be proud of our creation, for we will be like parents to this new race. We will guide them. That's why we go activize on the diamonds. Sorry. We will guide them, but they must make their own way and chart a course for themselves and the earth. And that's a good part. Candy encouraging us with Anastasia and Dale with our, we're making our new earth now, guys. Okay, I'll stop all right, so our new earth, based on their own conscious creation, it will not be easy, but they will win their way to freedom. And when the earth is ready to ascend, so too will they. It is part of the divine plan of the Elohim that this planet does not remain in ignorance and bondage. And when these four great ages have come and gone, the beings of the earth will be ready. 
but only if we intercede now to help them. Proteus raised his hands in protest. <clears throat> you cannot really expect these barbarians to evolve in consciousness just the way you say, he replied. They may receive our genetic codes, but what of the consciousness programming they already have? How can the transference of our genetics guarantee that Earthman will not one day use our genetic gifts to make war against us? How do you know that the genetic code of the indigenous race will not triumph over ours? As you say, these people will be like our children. They will be children of the stars, and yet they will also be children of the Earth. How will they reconcile these two energies? This is my concern. I feel it's too risky for us to create a free will being who is partly from the heaven and partly from the earth and expect that that being to be solely guided by that part of him that is of God's creation. Proteus paused. However, this is the only way these beings will ever evolve to join with us, with us as part of our galactic family. How will they know how to choose from love or even to know what love is. The men and women at the table began to talk anxiously among themselves. They came from many star nations to be here at the special assembly of the Council of the Galactic Federation. They each represented their own star nation as a member of the Galactic Council, and they wanted to ensure that this question of Earth's evolution was fully discussed and a viable solution agreed on. As beings aligned with the forces of divine creation, they had a responsibility to make sure that they did not give the gift of spiritual enlightenment to those who could not handle this vibration. They needed to be sure that the earth beings could evolve to act from a consciousness of peace, love, and unity with other forms of life. They all knew well enough that there were physical beings throughout the galaxy and beyond who had rebelled against the forces of love and oneness. These beings were a constant danger not only to themselves, but to others throughout the cosmos. The Galactic Council members did not want to be responsible for giving the Earth beings a spiritual capacity that they could not integrate. Once they gave their genetics to the Earth man, they could not take the genetics back, nor could they directly interfere with their free will. They could only watch and wait. Finally, a woman called Essiana rose from her seat. She represented the star system of Sirius. She was a tall, radiant woman with long, dark brown hair and green eyes. She wore a jeweled headdress set with a large ruby that almost covered her forehead. She seemed to shimmer with light. She had come a long way for this meeting and was anxious that her views and those of the star nation she represented were known. She began to speak. We have all come in peace to this gathering. We have come with a common purpose, and that is to find a solution to the problem we face within this galaxy of needing to create a race of earth beings who are capable of evolving in consciousness by their own free will and in so doing, are able to help us all return to oneness with the infinite love we know so well. You say, Proteus, that you are uncertain how the earth beings will respond if we give them our genetic heritage. And yet, who are you to judge this? You know that all the star nations of this galactic federation are one people. We are all part of infinite creation. We were created with genetic differences to experience life in different dimensions of reality. But we have also been challenged to come together in unity. For the most part, we have succeeded. We are now one galactic people, and yet, because of our genetic differences and our different dimensional environment, we are always apart. I am from Sirius, a fifth dimensional star, and because of this, my body is not well adapted to 12th dimensional Lyria or to other stars that are not at the Syrian vibration. 
We need to think ahead. Our star races must one day merge. We must become one people within our galaxy. When we as souls first pass through the Lyrian Stargate, we can descend into lower dimensional worlds, but we cannot ascend back to Lyria and we cannot ascend beyond these 12 dimensions. Even now, I look forward, I look toward the earth and see many races of beings created as we were, adapting to their place of birth. Now we must create a new race of beings on the earth. Beings who will embody all the finest attributes of our star nation. We must nurture and support these people that we will help to create, and we must infuse within them that spark of light that is of God. I know that it's risky. They will not understand or remember their star origin within the confinement of the third dimension. They they will be forced to play out many, many cycles of life on earth. But one day, they will be ready to know the truth. When that day comes, we will be watching and we will be waiting. When that day comes, the earth will be ready for advancement and the people of the earth, who will also be part of us, will join together with us. This new race of earth man must carry the vibrations of all 12 dimensions of these lower heavenly worlds. They must have a 12-strand DNA genetic code that will allow them to live within all 12 dimensions. Did you hear that, guys? We're going to have a genetic code that will allow us to live in within all 12 lower dimensions. With this gift, they will, in time, indeed exist in any of the 12 dimensions of the lower heavenly world that will allow for physical form Finally, our nations will truly become one galactic people of light. Mastiana, the Lyrian leader of the Galactic Council, smiled at the beautiful woman from Syria. You have spoken well, Ephiana. What is it that you recommend? My idea is to take the best qualities from each of our star nations, the genetic traits that we admire most in ourselves, that we admire most of ourselves, each other, and create a being who carries a part of the genetic heritage of all our nations, replied Essiana. This being must be given the capacity to think, feel, and express, but most importantly, this new being must be of God and be created according to divine design. My desire is that this being be called the human, H-U-M-A-N, as Hugh is the sacred sound of God's creation. I also propose that within the body of the new human being, we implant a crystalline gland to act as a receiver and transmitter of information from our world. Let me interject there. What's that crystalline gland? That's the pineal gland in the middle of our brain. So I also recommend, uh, I also propose that within the body of the new human being, Being, we implant a crystalline gland to act as a receiver and transmitter of information from our world. In this way, the new human creation will never be alone and will always be able to access the divine aspect of itself. This will be important if Earthman is to evolve to a consciousness of peace and love and join together with us. It is vital that all of us agree to this proposal because to create the new human being will require a commitment from all of us. She glanced across the table at Proteus. I understand your grave concerns, Proteus, she said. But we are, but we on Sirius can guarantee that the being who is created will measure up to the highest standards of genetic design. We will not allow a being to come into life who is not capable of evolving into love. This should be the intent behind the human creation, to create a being who has the capacity to learn to love and to express that love. You will see that in time. Man will reach this level of consciousness and then he will be ready to come of age. 
you will see them then that the decision that we make today will be both a blessing and a joy. I have journeyed with my vision into future time, and I see what will occur. The earth will go through four great cycles of time, four great ages, each of almost 26,000 years, earth years. While man evolves and learns about himself and his capabil- capacities, at the beginning of each great age, we will need to go to earth ourselves to help usher in this new stage of evolution and set an impetus impetus for the new learning and evolutionary progress that will occur. I feel that with this this support, Earthman will overcome any free will tendencies that might affect the path of evolution. At the end of these four cycles of time, when the Earth itself is ready to ascend to be once more a fifth dimensional planet, the human beings of the Earth will also be ready to ascend. It is then that they will become, they, it is then that we will welcome the people of the earth as our own. Demaeus, the wise old man from Lyria, added his voice to hers. We have a responsibility to do what is right for the people of the earth. At this time, they cannot possibly evolve without, without the, that spark of greater light that is of God. If we do not do this, then we ourselves are also limited. We are from many dimensions many realities with many different body types. Our physical bodies reflect the environments from which we come. We cannot mate with those who are not our kind. We cannot ascend back to Lyra and beyond to the higher worlds of light. If we each contribute the best of ourselves and if we give all 12 strands of our combined DNA to the human creation, then in time these beings will move beyond the confines of the earth. It may take time, as Esiana has said, until the earth and her people will be ready to join with us, but that day will surely come. Demaeus then looked around the vast cavern of light at the faces of the other members of the Galactic Council. There were so many different types of beings, people from all over the galaxy. Some looked virtually the same as each other, The Palladians, the Syrians, and those from Lyra look like people on Earth today. Those beings from far-off stars, such as Proteus from Alpha Centura, looked very different. Proteus was very tall, hunched, and covered in a scaly skin that shone copper green in the reddish-blue light. He had long white hair and a beard, which he played with and twisted as, as he spoke. There were other strange-looking beings, like the delegation from Alpha Draconis, who were very short with rounded eyes and yellow skin, and the Venusians, who glowed white, and though similar to their close kin, the Palladians, had facial features that were blunted and strange to the eye. In one corner of the room were the Octurians from 7th Dimensional Octurius, very tall and thin with upturned eyes, and and high rounded forehead. Next to them, clustered together, was a small group from the galaxy of Andromeda, strange-looking creatures of many hairy arms and with a protruding head like an insect. They were not a, they were not of the Milky Way galaxy, but they had nonetheless been accepted into the Galactic Federation. All these beings were creations of the One God, the supreme Creator of all. They all carried that spark of divine love that singled them out as being above other creatures and life forms. They all resonated with peace, love, and oneness together. They innately understood how important it was to include the people of the earth within their jurisdiction. They all knew that there were evolved life forms within the galaxy who did not conform to the will of God and who did not care about the rights of others. They were concerned that if they did not help the people of the earth, the earth beings could be enslaved by some other power who would dominate and control and use them against their will. They knew they knew it would be difficult to rescue them if this occurred, and then all earth would be lost. Many of the beings had tears in their eyes. They were compassionate and kind, and they wished so much to do the right thing for the earth people. 
Mastiana raised his hand. We will take a vote. The council proposes that a new type of being be created, a human being who will be designed to inhabit the planet that is Earth. We propose that a spiritualized human be created by the Syrians together with our Lyrian genetics to physically embody the best attributes of our star nation and to include all 12 strands of our combined DNA. From our brothers and sisters, the Palladians, we will give this human the capacity to love and to be loved and to show infinite compassion for those in need. This capacity will be embodied in both the physical heart to pump blood through the body and in the etheric heart, a heart chakra, to generate the energy of love. From the Octurians, we will give this human qualities of reasoning along with a complex and multifaceted emotional body capable of both subtle and deep feeling. The Andromedans will be asked to impart wisdom to this being to contribute their connection to the wisdom of the soul. Mastiana turned and bowed slowly to the strange-looking Andromedan contingent who were gathered together in one corner of the room. Their leader, Malwi, nodded in accord. If you please, Malwi said, we also wish to give the earth man our qualities of contemplative thinking, for we are able to analyze complex problems and find solutions to the mysteries of life. In this way, with these gifts, the people of the earth will be able to find their way forward and with their intellect develop technologies that will advance their civilization in the way that is required. Now we shuffled forward to the front of the assembly. I have come today with a gift that I wish to place before you. With one, with one of his many hairy arms, he held out an iridescent silver box and placed it on the table in front of Mastiana. The box was covered in strange markings like Egyptian hieroglyphs, glyphs, and yet not quite the same. Each of the inscriptions on the box was inlaid with mother of pearl. Inside this box are the vibrational records are the vibrational records of our nation, said Maui. We have struggled much in our history, both to gain acceptance from those of you who are different from us in physical form, but also to create a world where all star nations who hold the light of the law of one are considered equal. We do not want each man to suffer in the way we do not want earth man to suffer in the way that we have suffered. We wish to give them within their new twelve strand DNA template the sole records of Andromeda so that they might triumph over discrimination and adversity. In time, the racial memories of Andromeda will be stirred within them and then they will learn to accept others, no matter what their physical appearance or personal views might be. We give you this gift from our Andromedan galaxy to yours. We ask you to include this programming within the genetics of the human. Masiana offered his hand to Malwe. His eyes glistened with tears as he held one of the being's many hands in his. Okay, I'm good. All right. Masiana's eyes, the Andromedan, okay. The Andromedan looked very strange with his many hairy arms and long grasping fingers protruding from a short, rounded body set atop four hairy legs. The head and face might have seemed grotesque, but Mastiana saw beyond the outer facade of these cre- this creature's physical body and knew Malwi, Malwi to be a spiritual brother created by the one God just he, as he was but configured to a different design and equipped for a different physical environment and different life conditions. All the members of the Galactic Council stood and applauded. Maui smiled. At last, we feel accepted, he said. My people thank you. 
we look forward to working together with all of you to assist with the advancement of life within this galaxy. We will be there to help the earth beings as they evolve in consciousness and understanding. We are pleased to be able to offer you our gift. Essiana's green eyes sparkled with happiness and unbridled excitement. She had waited for this day and this decision for so long. She hadn't been to Earth. Okay, I hear background noise. Please, guys. She hadn't been to Earth, but she had seen images of the new Palladian colony of Atlantis and of the people there. She was pleasantly surprised at the Earth's beauty and potential. She well knew that the beings that presently inhabited the Earth had fallen in consciousness and vibration along with the Earth. They no longer had... Okay, can somebody please star six to mute out, please, on the moderator line. Sorry, guys. She well knew that the beings that presently inhabited the earth had fallen in consciousness and vibration along with the earth. They no longer had the spiritual capacity to link with the divine that sets men above other creatures, and this saddened her. Now they had a chance, an opportunity to evolve and become great. Maybe one day the beings of Earth would lead the way in this galaxy as they learned to draw upon all the qualities and gifts of their own of their new genetic heritage. She felt sure now that this time would come. Mastiana continued speaking. There are other qualities and attributes that we wish to give to the new human being of the Earth. We wish you, our brothers and sisters from Alpha Centura, to contribute contribute your finely tuned nervous system, for you resonate with a sensitivity that many of us envy. You are able to think and use your mind in ways that allow you to be to be preeminent among all the star nations with your inventions and ideas. You are able to move outside of what is known to what is not thought possible. And we wish these abilities to also be part of the human being. To you from Larry and Sirius, we give the task of physical creation. It will be your role to bring together in the most perfect way all the aspects that have been mentioned and to create a physical human who embodies a form that is strong and beautiful to look upon. To look upon. The male version of the human must have a mate, so I say to you, create also a female version of the man to nurture and guide this race with her wisdom of the heart. The male and female versions of the human being must complement each other and together be as one. And now we vote, says Mastiana. Who says yes to this proposal? All present raise their hands except the delegation from Alpha Chin. Centura, who averted their eyes. As one, they looked at Proteus, who was obviously struggling with his previous decision. Proteus looked embarrassed, shuffled a little, then cleared his throat and spoke. Fellow members of the Galactic Council, in my heart, I do not agree with your decision, but I will not prevent your desires for say, by saying no to this proposal. I trust that all will be in accordance with the plan for this place called Earth. And that right action will prevail. Does anybody hear any noise? Please star six. Maybe that's my phone talking. But I hear background noise. I'm almost finished. Star six. Hold on a minute. Maybe that'll help. Okay. Almost done, guys. This was very interesting, huh? Fellow members of the, uh, where was I? Therefore, I grudgingly agree to your decision. However, at this time, we from Alpha Centauri do not wish to give our genetics to this new human being. We will watch and wait and assist you if need be, but we do not wish to be involved further with this project. However, there may come a time when you wish to call on us and then we will be there to assist you with our advanced qualities of mind. Thank you, Proteus, said Mastiana. 
We are grateful. I thank all of you for coming here to Antares for this meeting. I now hand this project over to Ethiana and the others from Sirius, together with the Lyrian genet okay, together with the Lyrian geneticist. She will be responsible for researching and creating this new breed of human. May you all go in peace. Again, he held his hands out, palms upwards to the throng. From his hands there flowed a potent energy that was felt by all. It was a loving form of communication and a benediction. No touch, no words, but powerful energy. It washed over them and through them and nurtured them and bound them together as one. For a time, they all stayed and chatted together. Once the others had left, Essiana walked across the room toward Mastiana. She was thrilled by the council's decision. Her cheeks were flushed, apricot pink, and her long, dark brown hair hung to her waist and swung gently as she walked. She was wearing a long, silverly white robe that shone with a luminosity that was echoed by the milky whiteness of her skin. Oh, Masiana, I am overjoyed, she said. As you know, I have seen many images of the earth from when our starships have been there, and I have had such pity for the earth man. They have looked to be similar to us, yet within themselves they have been very different. They have not had a consciousness of love. They have seemed separate and alone, as wild animals are often separate and alone. Their days are spent in physical survival, and when they mate, they do so not from love, but from a base desire of lust. I have often looked upon images of their creatures and despaired for them. Now we have an opportunity to help this race. I am delighted. I will take the silver box to Sirius and assemble a team of genetic specialists who will work together to create a human being who carries the genetic codes from all of us. I will need to get the approval of the Syrian Council, but I feel that this will just be a formality. They, too, will want to help the Earth beings. Essiana stood very close to Mastiana. In the reddish-blue light, she seemed to glow. Mastiana smiled at her and took her hand. For one long moment, they looked deep into each other's eyes. Then the moment passed, and after giving Mastiana a quick embrace, Asiana walked to the transporter station and stepped inside. The device began to hum and flash with light, and a strange high-pitched sound filled the room. Instantly, she was gone. Her physical body transported at that moment back to Sirius. The transporter chamber stood empty. Mastiana shook his head. He felt sad as he, too, walked into the transporter for his journey home. He loved this woman from Sirius, but he knew that she could never be with him and that her path led elsewhere. He, too, set the dial, coding the correct destination into the transporter, coding not for Sirius, but for another distant, far-flung star, Epsilon Lyra. Part of the tiny constellation of Lyra was his home. The constellation of Lyra exists in three dimensions, the 10th, 11th, and 12th dimensions. It includes the star Vega, one of the brightest stars in the heavens. Mastiana's home was on the Epsilon Lyra 1 system, which compromises two similar stars slowly orbiting around a common center of gravity. Epsilon Lyra was a place of lush vegetation, cascading waterfalls, and towering emerald green hills merging together with the violet sky overhead. In this 12th dimensional world of greater light, the Lyrians practiced the type of digestive osmosis to get their nourishment from the prana of the air. Their strong, beautiful bodies did not decay or age as they had long since mastered the secrets of physical regeneration by thought creation. They were tall and handsome. Their classically beautiful features, highly refined, as if chiseled from a piece of stone and glowing with light. Mastiana was tall. He had inherited his jet black hair, strong chiseled jaw, 
and black eyes from his vegan mother. He dressed as, as did most of the Lyrian men in a long white toga-like robe, while the women wore garments of jewel-like iridescent hues, determined not by fashion or, bo- or by what they preferred to wear, but by spiritual attainment. The women of Lyra are held in the highest regard within the Lyrian culture as they hold what is known as the key of destiny, and they weave the strands of dream time with their combined consciousness forces of creation. They bring together threads of energy, light, and focused intention that chart the course for the entire Lyrian civilization and, in so doing, for all the star nations within this 12-dimensional matrix of life in the lower heavenly world. They do this because Lyra is the portal or stargate through which all souls pass on their journey into the lower worlds of light. The Lyrian women are true creators, and together they hold the reins of destiny for all the star nations. The color of their clothing represents their light attainment and creation capacity. And it takes many lifetimes of dedicated study and commitment for them to advance. I'm on the last page, guys. When Mastiana excited the transporter station on Epsilon, Lyra 1, he immediately stepped within a beam of silverly blue energy, a kind of metro system based on light which spread like many spiraling silvery blue ribbons throughout the skies of the city. The people called this overhead mass transport system Kana. They could stand on it as if standing on a flowing magic carpet. The speed of the energy flow transported people almost immediately where they wanted to go. The destiny of the beam of light was sufficient to hold Mastiana upright, secure, and supported and supported as he made his way home. Mastiana lived in a towering crystalline dwelling on the outskirts of the largest city of Epsilon Lyra. He soon stood at the doorway of his home and, with his mind intent and focused, entered a code to open a bronze gateway located in the right-hand lower quadrant of what looked like a solid glass wall, the door to the dwelling. There were no windows in the external facade of the house. Huge crystalline domed-shaped windows were located in the roof, facing upwards to the violet light of the sky and to the rolling emerald hills beyond. This gave the house a feeling of complete seclusion and serenity, although it was, in fact, surrounded by many others. Lyra was an egalitarian society, and although Mastiana was an important man in their society, and the house was spacious and very beautiful, it was aesthetically very simply and sparsely furnished. From the building's entrance, Mastiana could see upwards all the way from the ground floor through many levels to the transparent domed rooftop overhead. It was like looking upwards through layers of glass, some of the rooms visible, some private with their walls and floors opaque, a spiral staircase like an escalator of light similar to the Kana system of the city ran upwards through the center of the house Connecting, connecting each level of the dwelling. This staircase of light looked like a double-stranded spiral of DNA, one loop spiraling up as it ascended and the other spiraling down as it descended. At each level, all that was needed to get off the staircase was to use the mind to cease the flow of energy. Mastiana was tired. The meeting in on terrace had exhausted him. It has been a very demanding series of meetings with many long sessions spent talking with delegates. Some delegates from the various star nations had broken into factions, splinter groups that had caused unrest and then put forward forward proposals that took great diplomacy to handle. Now all he wanted to do is lie down and go to sleep. 
he pressed a button on the wall of a large circular room high at the top of the house, its vast overhead roof of windows open to the sky. Instantly, a bed soft with white sheets and many pillows rose upwards through the floor. With another flick of a switch and a mental command, the glass-like roof became opaque and shut out the violet light. He slept deeply and for a long time. While he slept, he dreamed of Esiana, the beautiful woman from Sirius. He felt her with him, and while in his dream state, he held her close to him as he had so often wished to do in his life. That's the end of chapter The Dreamers in Sunshine Before the Dawn. Next time we will read chapter 2, and that's titled Essiana. Okay, let me unlock the room. I hope you guys enjoyed that. That's beautiful. And uh, let's see if there's any comments for Dale or me or anything anybody wants to bring in. Once. Okay, guys, star six, come on in. Candy Dale, anybody? It was really beautiful, uh, Elizabeth. You were right. It was very interesting to hear about the planning committee from uh, 100,000 years ago and, and, uh, you, you know, and that Atlantis was just such a small colony there, and and, and uh, so here. Thank you for sharing. What do you mean, Atlantis? There, and Atlantis is here on Earth. <laughs> yes, I agree. And when they were reading of what gifts they're going to give us, it's like what we have now. But I never, when I read this book, I never imagined. I thought we were just born with it, but we literally developed these gifts through our lifetimes. Anyway, yeah. Anybody else? You can bring anything in, the reading or what Dale brought in or Candy. Any comments, anything? Come on in, it's your time. Well, Dale mentioned about the um, the website, ic.org, and uh, for the Fellowship of Intentional Communities. And I would recommend to your listeners that they visit ic.org and uh Plug in uh, Dancing Rabbit. That's a that's a very fine uh, intentional community uh, just north of uh, St. Louis, Missouri. It's been there for over ten years, and so um, that that might be an interesting little research to start to get familiar with that website and how it's used. And you never know when you run into someone who's who's looking for a new living arrangement. There are, of course, many uh, urban communities as uh, rural communities. So they're they're in almost every city, the urban ones. Uh, can you? I, I yeah. don't know if I'm un- unmuted. Can you hear me? <laughs> yes, I can Come hear on. you. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, well, you know, the, as far as uh, resourcing uh, subject matter and and uh, uh, yeah, uh, guests. Any, any, you know, if anybody comes in contact with something that they feel would be good for the show, then by all means, you know, uh, uh, go ahead and, uh, you know, uh, get them as contributors. Great. Yeah, so can, just look forward, to everybody, to every other Thursday. Me and Candy will be on with Dale. Dale will come in and describe you know, the communities he's going to have a show on that week, I'm sure. And uh, go ahead, Dale, I didn't mean to interrupt. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say, you know, as this thing develops, uh, there's going to be all kinds of things that come to mind that, that, that mm-hmm. would be appropriate for the program. And, and so, we, we you know, we want to encourage all those contributions. Mm-hmm. So if anybody has a has an idea of, of uh of, of of something that they want to put on the program, then then mm-hmm. let's let's do it. I don't want to uh, uh, I don't want to I, I don't want to uh, edit out anything myself. Right. Well, okay. We have, have a lot. Email. We we have a lot of people. Okay. Yeah. That sounds real good, Dale. And and there's a, the give your eye. Like, okay. The only yeah. thing yeah. I'd like to add, add while we're on that subject of of the uh, voices are from a from the uh, the alternative world is 
I, I, to begin with, I'd just like to limit it to a half an hour for a while because what, what happens if, okay. you, if you don't... Let's talk don't about that offline, please, because I want to ask, yeah. there's many people on the call, and I want to I encourage you to come in, and I really want some feedback of what I read and what yeah. Candy's reading. I want you. I want to know if you guys still want this or we'll do something different, and if you want something different, let us know, please. Um, I want to know if you enjoyed it. Yeah, yes, yes, I enjoyed it very much. I thought it was just very, very interesting and informative. And I, I was wondering, is this was this a channel book? I was wondering where this information came from. Yeah, I read it. I read how she got it last 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 time oh. last show, so oh. you can go back and listen to that. Yeah, and, and it was channeled from these beings. Yeah, but there's more okay. to it than that. Yeah, it All was right. like a destiny for her. Yeah. Yeah, it's it on the crazy. first Candy and Elizabeth Diamond show. So thank you, Sonny, for your feedback. I really want more feedback. Please, you guys. Uh, yes, yeah, yes. Well, Andy, I, listen, no. I, I have something to say, and it really, uh, you know, it, it, what this does, it, it clarifies all the unanswered questions. Like, really, why is this incredible conflict uh, uh, that exists within uh, within us? You know the the battle of good and bad, and where did the good come, and why, and and why, and why why is the bad there? You know, for for lack of a better word, you know, positive, negative, light, dark, uh, uh, and you know, it, it just uh, there there has you know there has to be an answer, and this is really uh, it resonates as the best answer I've ever heard. I would tend to agree with that. And that's exactly, you hit it on the nail, Dale and Sonny. That's what I yeah. I thought. That's part of the yeah. reason I want to read this book to everybody. Yeah. yeah it's just Favorite. such a, one, uh, so detailed and so precise. <laughs> I really appreciated it. And, and, it, and, it, and it helps to clarify a waspy a lot. Mm. It really does. Yeah. Would anybody else like to come in? Well, the room's open. Just star six, please. Just say hi. <laughs> Don't make me beg you. Just come say hi, you guys. Don't make us beg you. This is Joe Lynn. Can you hear me? Hi, Joe Lynn. Come on in, guys. Girl. <laughs> Hello. Hey, I, I was just thinking while we were reading this, if anyone has some question about how does how do we look at this uh, story of what we call reality, of how we got here in the physical, uh, which that's very well described, and how do we reckon the fact that we are uh, the divine of God as a soul or as a spirit inhabiting these wonderful bodies that we just read about? What is the demarcation of the God presence, the I emness of who we are, separate from the body, because obviously the, the human mind itself becomes diluted with the thoughts, but yet the divine of God, the spark of God that we have always been, inhabits us uh, and lives in these bodies. So I'm wondering uh, where the story reckons those two into a oneness so that we can recognize that in my essence of divine love, I am all of, of that essence from the very beginning, and I lack nothing, even though my body has limitations and my mind has distortions. Does that make sense? Yes, it makes sense. And in this particular story, I, I don't want to call the story, I just say fact, whatever. It's a, it's a story, but there's fact. Is it's a fact. This story is weaved with a love story in the midst of the story, and the story tells about all of these beings and the struggles they went through to get us genetically encoded with their special gifts. It's a beautiful story as we go on. And so love and unity all flows through this. That's going to be good for all of us, huh? Hmm. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of like... Look, I, I don't know what the heck the truth is, but I, I know it when I hear it. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah, it resonates somehow. <laughs> yeah. Well, all of this resonates quite well as to the history of how we got here through evolution and time. Uh, but obviously many of us have been here many, many times, and there's been some soul evolution 
that we keep coming back with and improving. And yeah. uh, so I am I'm trying to kind of grasp this oneness concept that we are with the divine uh, that uh, that we continue to recognize in our spirituality lacks nothing and has complete access to all of the unknown. Well, uh, you're, you, the reason why you're going through these questionings, and it's happening to all of us, the energies right now are bringing us to know that we are one with everything. And by the way, last week I read this book is encoded with vibrations to infill us for the good, the highest good of all concerns. So as you listen to this book, we're not just listening to a story or a fact that happened. We're getting encoded with this vibration of love, unity, of like how the Galactic Council debated and got along, decided this big decision. And there's long, too, with Anastasia books. So I really love this night call on Thursday. Is, well, is there anybody you, else that would have liked to come? Yeah, sure. Stay tuned, Jill and, and Dale and everybody. Is anybody else? Star six? Anybody Anybody else want to bring anything in? You guys that talked? Or Candy? Mm-hmm. Otherwise, we'll be done. And then Dale, give your email out if anybody has any guests that they know that they're they know a community or people that are um uh, let okay, me just I'm, I'm, start I'm, wait uh, they wait okay if they know a community uh, that's building in uh, creating the new world the golden age doing something off the matrix yeah. that's good for all of us you let Dale know email him and we can bring yeah. a guest on from that particular community to learn more about our our world being created in beauty already to encourage yes. us so Dale give your email please. Oh. Okay, I'm going to give my phone number and my emails, okay? Uh, That's area code 562-326-4197. And uh, my email is spreadlight, S-P-R-E-A-D-L-I-G-H-T, at yahoo.com. Thank you, Dale. And just go on my Facebook and private message me, and I'll talk with you so that way you don't okay. have to cost money. Yeah. yeah and yeah. I want to give my phone number out, too. I always give it out. Anybody who wants to call me for any questions, any okay. any, so ideas, me, any ideas, any ideas uh, or any creation? Yeah, me give me a second to get a pen. I'm in the other room. I, I want to say, to while you're doing that, Dale, I want to say that uh, – uh, be sure, folks, to come Monday, Wednesday, and 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 uh, Thursday next week. And and Elizabeth, who is going to be your guest besides me, Cynthia, and Chris on Monday? Absolutely. And then next Thursday is Cynthia's call and Marianne. Marianne with astrology, learning who we really are. And then now we know that we're going to add a, a call on the Diamond Network. Uh, Dale's call, and that's. Uh, What's the title again, Candy? Help me. Visionaries voices, for voices from uh, from the uh, the alternative world. Voices from an alternative world. Yeah, from the uh, from the alternative world. Voices from okay. the alternative world. Voices from the alternative world, and that's going to give us motivation, empowerment to to create this golden age world. Yes, on earth, as it is in heaven. <laughs> Heaven okay. on Earth. Okay, Miss Mulligan, I'm I'm ready to copy your your uh, phone number. Okay, six one two. Six one two. Four nine nine. Four nine nine. Nine nine four three. Nine nine four three. And what was the uh, next time that we were scheduled to call, to call you? Whenever, just Facebook okay. me. It'd be easier for you. It's freer. Okay. Yeah. Oh, well, we're going to have to get with uh, Sunny and, and coordinate yeah. the program. Yeah. There was Don't a, worry. Just be, Facebook me, and I'll coordinate. Yeah. yeah. I'll okay. coordinate it. Just uh, Facebook me. Yeah. And then uh, Sunny, you'll give me a call and let me know the time. Yeah. I'm not sure to say Facebook. That's why. That's why I'm going. Through. Okay. Well, Sunny can private message me, and I'll talk with her, and then she can get a hold of you. Yeah. I'm okay. still okay. here. Yeah. yeah. We're both in the same time zone. Uh, okay. Dale and okay. I, All right. So we can. Uh, Beautiful. Yeah. Okay, cool. Anybody right. else that's online, please come in and add to this <laughs> this beauty soup, yummy soup. I, 
I had one more thing to say. The man that um, I was trying to get, he is still willing to come and, and speak on the show, but he wasn't going to be available to the, tonight because he was too busy. <laughs> but he was in a, a part, of, a strong part of the commune, the One World Family commune that I was with in the 70s. And uh, I was going to mention this. Anybody uh, have your radar, radar on for anything that you might be a uh, feel is appropriate for the program, and, and so because programming, you know, filling filling uh, the space is a is a, a big job. So uh, mm-hmm. we need everybody on hand to do uh, that. Well, we should be able to do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah pretty absolutely. pretty re- pretty readily. I, I mean, I know until, I can get lots let's, of ideas. Let's, let's let's fill a half an hour till we're overflowing before we go to an mm-hmm. hour and end up with empty space. Uh, uh, Dale, Dale, I've been doing this two or three, four years. Believe me, if you have a guest, you'll fill up an hour and you'll want to go over. But okay, so gotcha. here's how here's how it'll go really quick. Okay, like seven minutes of your introduction, your whatever your overall thing about the show. And then introduce your guest, and then you can have, like, some questions to ask your guest. You can interject, not, you know, you both will be talking throughout the show, you know. And then, like, take 10 minutes at the end of the hour to end the call, give your overview, and tell who your next person is going to be, okay? Okay. How's that? Right. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody there, else? That. Sounds really interesting. Yeah. yeah well, Candy, let's, let's end it here, Bring in what you want. Oh, I'm glad we're doing this on Thursday night, but I think we should continue it at least throughout September. Hmm. Oh, we're going to continue it until I finish reading this book. You kidding? <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Are you silly? <laughs> this book has, let me see, you guys. It, uh... Oh, God. Let me show you. Well, when we first sorry. started, you only committed to, to August and September. Oh. And so... And now, well, now I see you're stretching it out. This uh, book has many chapters. The Ession is next, and three is Epiphany, four is Lyra, five is The Blessing, six is The Lyran Stargate, the seven is The Halls of Dream Time, eight is Union, nine is The Golden Key, and I'll I keep going. Anyway, yeah, so great. I can't wait yeah, for the next uh, call. Uh, ditto. I'm, I'm, uh, I, I, I say bring on more, more of the same, Elizabeth. It was a great presentation, and very informative. Mm-hmm. Well, everybody, stay tuned to Diamonds Network, and we got many shows. Raw speaks, Cynthia on Thursdays, Candy and me on Thursdays, and Mondays. Do not miss. And we have others coming uh, behind the scenes, and other surprises behind the scenes. And behind that, more surprises that I don't even know about. So we're all going to be surprised. So we're in September it's all good. now. <laughs> yeah. yeah, riding the way through September. Absolutely. Yeah. Okay, well, keep shining, diamonds, and dream sweet dreams tonight. Love you all. And Candy Likewise. gives you her candy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I love all right. You all. Uh, don't forget to check out. Diamonds with an S forever three one dot blogspot dot com every day and the YouTube channels are there and everything. Okay, guys. Okay. All right. Love ya. Thank you Love all. You. Thank you. Love you. Thank you. Are you looking for healing or a change in your life to help you enjoy it more fully? You might benefit from a galactic energy reading and clearing from Chris Jacobs. Chris will work with you on a soul level to clear unseen negative influences, implants, programs, contracts, and energetic blocks. Chris Jacobs is a gifted energy healer. Contact him today at ChristopherStephenJacobs at gmail.com.